Lion of Judah, the Lamb who was slain, He ascended to heaven and evermore will reign. At the end of the age, when the earth you reclaim, He will gather the nations before you. And the eyes of all men will be fixed on the Lamb who was crucified. With wisdom and mercy and justice you'll reign at your Father's side. And the angels will cry, Hail the Lamb, who was slain for the world, ruling power. And the earth will reply, You shall kings and the Lord of all lords. There's a shield in our hand and a sword at our side. There's a fire in our spirits that cannot be denied. Cause the Father has told us, for these you have died. For the nations that gather before you. In the ears of all men need to hear of the Lamb who was crucified, who descended to hell yet was raised up to reign at his Father's side. And the angels will cry, Hail the Lamb who was slain for the world,
Like to, you can stand for the next few. <coughs> In the darkness, we were waiting without hope, without light till from heaven. There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt Praise the Father, praise the Son Praise the Spirit
angels and the saints, we raise a mighty roar. Glory to our God, who gave us life beyond the
join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free forever. Amen. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. Thank you. You may be seated. with a word of prayer. Father, we come to you this morning. We thank you that death has been arrested. We thank you that we are free. We thank you that your grace is what washes over us. And God, this morning, we just pray that as we worship you, as we hear your word, as we fellowship with each other, that that grace would continue to wash over us. God, help us to feel your presence anew. Help us to understand who you are more in, in God, what you expect of us and what you want from us. So, Lord, this morning we, we give this service to you, <clears throat> we give our lives to you, and Jesus, we just pray that you would come and invade us and invade this place. Make this a sanctuary of your grace and of your peace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. It's good to see you, each one of you, this morning. If you're visiting, I welcome you, and I trust that you'll feel the presence of Christ here with us this morning, that you'll come back and worship with us again. For a devotion this morning, please turn to Psalm chapter 113. Psalm chapter 113. This psalm was a, is, is, was a, a psalm that was usually sung, Psalm 113 and Psalm 114 were, were usually sung before the Jews would sit down and have their Passover meals. This would be a very special song for them to have sung. And as they would have sang this, it would have brought back memories, it would have brought imagery back of their time in Egypt and their freedom because of God's hand on their lives and God's directing and God's grace given to them to be freed from the, from the slavery that they were in. And as we read through this chapter this morning, Psalm 113, keep that in the back of your mind. Keep, back, keep that in the back of your mind. As we've gone through our Sunday school lessons, we've, we've gotten through the, the exodus, the part where we see the children of Israel freed from that slavery. And as you remember that and we go through this psalm, just keep that thought in your mind. Let's begin. Let's read through these verses. Psalm 113 says, Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore, from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all the nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, who is seated on high, who looks down far on the heavens and on the earth? He raises the poor from the dust, and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise God the Lord. Psalmist begins this section of verses and he says right in verse 1 he addresses the people who are to praise the Lord. He says praise the Lord the servants of the Lord. If you are here this morning you're a believer in Jesus Christ if you're following Jesus and he is guiding in the Lord of your life then you are being addressed here. He's saying O servants of the Lord praise the Lord. He then moves into verses 2 and 3. <clears throat> he tells us when we're to praise how often are we to do this? He said, blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. There will not be an end. He says, from the rising of the sun to the setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. So as we're here this morning, this is easy, right? We haven't quite got here before the rising of the sun, and we won't be here when it's setting, but the, the concept is there that from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep, let joy and praise be on your lips. And like I said, it's easy to do that when we're here in church. It's easy to do that this morning. But what about tomorrow morning and Tuesday and midweek on Wednesday? And as the week drags on and continues to, to sometimes bear its, its heavy weight upon us, are we still waking up praising God and going to bed praising God? From the rising of the sun to its setting. Then moves on in verses 4 through 6, and it just, it just explains His majesty. The greatness of God. He says, the Lord's high above all the nation, his glory is above the heaven. Who is like the Lord our God, who's seated on high, and he looks down on the earth. 
I find it interesting the psalmist says that he's actually seated above the heavens. He looks down on the heavens and on the earth. A few weeks ago now, Dr. Jason Lyle was at River of Life Church, and as an astrophysicist, he kind of brought out a lot of interesting things about the heavens, about the vastness and the expanse that's out there, and it just blows your mind. It, it, it's hard to comprehend how big the heavens are, and the fact that our God sits above them and looks down on them. They're nothing. They're small compared to our God. How, how amazing is that? And he then moves on, verses 7 through 9. And when I said at the beginning that this is a, a, a psalm that they would have sang before their Passover meals, this would have been part of that psalm and would have pointed them back to their time in Egypt and the freedom that they had because of that. It says it raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. That's who Israel was. They were the poor. They, were, they had nothing as slaves. And they were brought out of the ash heap. It says it makes them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. And he gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. And we see that as we move on. As we move on in our Sunday school lessons, we're going to see that more and more. The way that God blesses the children of Israel makes them numerous and gives them a home. He says that's a promise, that he gives them a home. And all of this is because of what happens in verses 1 through 6. When we come to the Lord in praise, when we recognize who he is, when we walk with him, God blesses us. He blesses us. He blesses us with a home. He blesses us with a way that he's raised us out of the ash heap and out of the dust. And as Christians, as believers, that gives us great joy. It allows us to go back to verse 1 and say, praise the Lord. He's done this. It's his work. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you this morning that you have set us free, that you have pulled us out of the ash heap, that you've given us a home, that you've given us an inheritance through your Son. We thank you for the way that you have worked all of that out. It's by your grace. And God, we just thank you for this psalm, the way that it points to your majesty, the way that you sit above the heavens. God, you're so big. You're so amazing and you're so vast, but yet you cast your love on us. So thank you, Father, for that. As we go through our service today, God, may we be reminded of who you are, of how amazing you are, and how amazing you love us. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Call on our chorister at this time to lead us in our congregational singing. Five hundred eighty two. <clears throat> I'm pressing on the upward way, new heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand, by faith on heaven, stable plan, a higher I 
have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I break, still have I found. Lord, lead me unto higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, when my feet on high. Number 568. <clears throat> 568. Oh, oh, oh. As lies the farm within the sea, as in the cold the tree, so praise the God of truth and grace, His Spirit dwelleth in me. Christ liveth in me, Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation is that Christ liveth in me. Once far from God and dead in sin, no light my heart could see. But in the word the light I found, now Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. that Christ liveth in me. As rays of light from yonder sun, the flower but conquers free. So life and light and love came forth from Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. That Christ liveth in me. With longing all my heart is still, that like him I may be. As on the wondrous thought I dwell, that Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Number 606. <clears throat> 606. Let's stand as we sing this, please. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above. Praise Him above.
thank you so much for him, for the many years of service that he's given to you, to your church, and to your work. And God, we just pray that as he brings a message this morning, that this would be a way that we could hear what you want us to hear. God, touch his heart, God, touch his mind, free him of anything that he may want to hinder himself with. We just pray that you would just give him the ability to share anything that you've laid on his heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brother. Well, it's good to be back again. And some of you have heard or seen on the mission support, uh, Good, Better, Best Ministries, and with young people, Good, Better, Best! Let's live and rest! Tell Anyway, they get excited, and uh, you know what's exciting to me? I see some people here this morning that <clears throat> they have a wife, a husband, children, and I met them many years ago when they were a child or a teenager, and it's a thrill to see those that are in God's house loving God in a church, a church that has a balance of new Christian music and also the hymns of the faith based upon God's Word, a church built upon God's Word, and uh, thrilled to see those young people that are here. And uh, would you bring this one over, just uh, down in the middle of the black, bring it right and move that over here, right in front for me, right here. Come. Oh, that's good right there. Thank you, thank you. And I just want to thank you so much for the privilege of being one of your missionaries. And uh, it's exciting. It's exciting. I, well, it was 41 years ago when it was my privilege to help the Christian school next door begin. And the staff would come to my seminars and meetings and, and to be able to have a part in training them and the paces, the, the, the curriculum and the Christian school, many of the cartoon ideas and the things in there came from me. And uh, what, a, what a joy. You say, well, that's been a long time ago. It has. But I just want to thank those of you that give to missions. And on behalf of all those that you support, I want to say thank you, thank you. I wish you'd been with me just a matter of weeks ago. I, I was over in a mission field that's called Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Well, they had a parent night. And many of those students that were in the Christian school their mother or father were not believers, were not saved. And so I had a parent night, had chapel for the students in the morning, and several of those students trusted the Lord as their Savior, and there were other decisions. But, but that night, afterwards, there were several parents came to Jesus. And this lady that came up to the pastor and principal of the school, tears streaming down her cheeks, and she said, I appreciate the school. But she said, now, and her voice quavering, I know Jesus. Whoa, that gets me excited, and it should make you very pleased that you have a part in that. You say, well, that Christian school you were in, well, it wasn't in Minnesota. It was a, another mission field called Michigan. Well, here is this boy. See what happens. Trust Jesus as a Savior. What do he do? Well, at lunchtime, he went to his friends and he said, hey, 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 Joe, 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 you need what I got. You need what I got. You ought to see Brother Rice, and you can get saved too. You know, it makes me pretty confident that God has done a work in a life when they tell others. You see, well, how do you know that? Well, I, was, <clears throat> I wasn't that old. I was four years old when I trusted Jesus because I was a bad boy and I knew it. Mm hmm and I got saved. And in kindergarten, there was that girl. Her name was Cherry. I told her, you don't have to burn them candles and pray. Hail Mary, Mother God. You don't have to do that. You can pray straight to God and you can get saved. So I want to tell every boy, every girl, every young person that's here, you don't wait until you're an old person, 20, 21, 20, to start walking with God and telling others about Jesus. You weren't there when that boy was telling others you see what happened? Well, he brought two other boys, his buddies. He said, can we talk to you? Uh, I think, uh, you know, he said, uh, we need... And then there was that girl in Georgia. It wasn't long ago. It was a day 
Second day I was there in the school. Had preached in the church, had a men's meeting on a Saturday night before that. And this girl, 16 years old, she came to office and the principal's wife, secretary, she said, well, honey, what, what is it? Can I help you? She said, I just had to tell you. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I got saved yesterday. Now, this past year, you see, Brother Rice, there have been 45 meetings in 16 states and three countries. That's right. Yeah. You weren't there. Oh, some of you were. Because not only are you were giving to missions. You see, Brother Rice, that trailer's a different trailer. Well, I parked out here in the last 23 years. That's a fifth trailer parked there. You say, how come you've had thousands of dollars of repairs and all this, and the tires blowing? And blah, 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 blah. How come? And you got to buy a new one. I never bought a new one. We get used ones that are already pretty worn for when I get them, you know. Your prayers, your giving, you have a part. And it's uh, been a joy to represent you. You see, well, when you leave this area, finish for churches around here, where, oh, I'm going to be down in Dover, Delaware at Central Mennonite there, and then going to be up to Fairview Mennonite Church is in Reading, Pennsylvania. Then going to be without, you see, there was this girl, and, and I, you see, well, you prayed with the students at school? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and she was a student? Uh-huh. Then she got to be a teenager? Sure did. And then oh, she went to, uh, she went to a missionary, she went to China? Uh-huh, yeah. And, and she texted you? Yeah, we texted her some back and forth, yeah. And then she said, Brother Rice, I would like to have a husband. So would you pray? Well, I said, I sure will. And so then she told me, she says, you know, we had a real bad snow there at, at, at the church and, and there were young people meeting and she said it was real icy and this fellow came over and he helped me and, and all of a sudden her eyes got bright. I said, boy, she got it. She in love with that guy, sure enough. What's his name? Oh, his name is Matt. Uh-huh. And, and so I got to meet this one. I looked him over real good, you know. And so then they got married. I couldn't be here. I couldn't be here. So they sent me a video so I got to see it, you know, that way. And, uh, but you say, well, Brother Ross, then they, 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 they had a garden. Yeah, I ate some of the stuff out of their garden. And then they had a baby. <laughs> you know, I'm not too much on babies because they spit up on you. Yeah, I hand them back to you, you know. But then here comes the number two. And then all of a sudden I get, I get called and lettered and emails and texts from Pennsylvania. And they said, you know this Matt Schrag? I said, hon, you know his wife? And, 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 and Tamara, I said, uh-huh. They said, well, we're looking at him, thinking about having him come and serve and minister with us. I said, well, I know him. I said, they love Jesus. Woo! And committed to God's word. Well, what kind of preacher is he? I said, now that you're going to have to ask other people about. Because when I come, I've been the one preaching and I hadn't heard him preach. You see, Brother Rice, there in Pennsylvania. Oh, I'm going to see him, Lord willing. Everything's Lord willing. Everything's Lord willing. But I'm going to see them. You see, you're going to be there in their church. Yeah, it'll be in the middle of December, I think, when I'm scheduled to be there and looking forward to that. Uh, and uh, some of you, you know, uh, when I had such bad health and, and my wife was, was gone and in heaven and and so I, I couldn't go to the mission field. You see, Brother Rice, you spent, you spent uh, uh, so much time overseas all your life. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you had over 20 meetings a year. In Japan and Australia and New Zealand and, and Papua New Guinea and Canada and 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 and, and, oh, and, 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 and Korea, oh yeah, Philippines. But I'm old now. In my late 70s, I said, and I can't go like I used to to minister to thousands of missionaries all over the world. Can't be in their home, can't minister to their children, can't help them. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to send where I can't go. I'd like to send videos for the family to watch and, and, and for the teenagers and for the boys and girls and some videos and things I've used with men and, and get a kit together and send the kit to 1,000 missionaries where I can't go anymore to those far, far flights. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, what well, costs about $60 for a kit... Yeah. You say, well, what do we got to do with that? 
Well, every three months, here's come. Here come a gift from this church to say, I want to help you. Buy some diesel fuel. I want to help another repair. Yeah, yeah. I want to keep you on help. And you know what? Each time in the last three and a half, almost four years, I've taken out of that money that you sent from this church to Good, Better, Best Ministries, I've taken $60 woo, and sent a kit to missions. 16 missionaries in Africa, India, and around the world have come from your missionary. Don't worry about you doing too much. You're not, God's going to bless you, and he's going to use every bit. And if, you, if you're a, a, a real solid prayer for missions, boy, don't you stop. And you pray for those others in the church that hadn't caught the vision yet. And maybe they're, they don't have them. They're not praying all the time for missionaries, and they're not helping. And you pray that God will give them the, the vision. But you see, well, Brother Rice, you had a vision of 1,000. Are there that many? Have you reached 1,000? No. But... As of this morning, 400! Praise the Lord. Woo, I was just so happy, happy about that. And, and I want to thank you for, for your prayers. I wish you'd pray more. Some of you need to get on the prayer line more. Pray for the missionary's family. Health even, finances. Man, I've been around, 10 of my friends or more have died of covid my daughter's been my oldest one teaching Christian school. She's been in hospital three times with COVID. Three different times, yeah. And you say, well, Brother Rice, how about you? How about your health? Well, just this past year, I had scheduled 46 meetings, but only got 45. You say, why? Because I had three rides in ambulance. Why don't they make ambulances nicer? Well, they should, they've been making, they charge a fortune to ride in one of those things. They ought to be comfortable. I felt every bump. I didn't like it at all. You see, well, that was in Tupelo, Mississippi, and then down, down in, in Florida, down not far from Daytona, yeah, you want to, and, and, I'm, and then in Texas, you want another ambulance? Yeah. I praise the Lord for hospitals and for nurses and for, yeah, when you need them. You see, Brother Rice, you were in four hospitals. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just not fun at all. But you see, there are some people pray for missionaries. And you say, well, God brought you through it. And you got that ticker. They finally got that thing in the heart working with that thing. It had to, that, that pacemaker. Well, you can buy a boat or a car for what that pacemaker costs. You know. But you say, you got one of them? Yeah, I got one of them. But only missed one meeting. Saying, we serve a great God. A miraculous God. And I'm so thankful for your partnership, and it's an honor for me to be one of your missionaries and to serve the Lord, representing the kingdom of God and the Word of God. Oh, that we have instructions. Take your Bibles right now and turn with me, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. What they always, when I come here, they tell me, Brother Rice, we have Sunday school when you don't come. But you preach so long, it puts Sunday school in jeopardy. And you know those Sunday school teachers, well, they love you sort of. But they'd love you better if you let, didn't well, go into their time and take so much of their time. Uh-huh. Well, I want to, I need to love everybody, including the Sunday school teachers. So I'm going to try, if you'll listen good. You see, you talk too fast. You think I talk to you fast, you wait till this week. Woo! With six times with the young people next door. That's when I, I wake up. Uh-huh. I'm just kind of calm right now with the elderly. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter 6. Would you stand with me if you can in honor of God's word? First Corinthians chapter 6. Follow along in your Bible. Verse 19. What? Know ye not Ralph the, Ralph's body? Hey, when you read your Bible, if it's a warning, if it's a promise, if it's instruction, if it's a, to a Christian, I, you, you, if you're here this morning, you're not saved, I, I wouldn't leave this room until I trusted Jesus. You know about God, that doesn't get you in heaven. Personal faith, trusting Him. It says, what? Know ye not that you're by talking about Christians now. 
Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, Ralph. I mean, I'm saved. Must be for me. Uh -huh. You're not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Boy, that's the blood of Jesus on the cross. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Oh, let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Oh, God, thank you for every person here that's saved, young and old. Oh, God, may we remember who we belong to. Oh, God, may we follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Well, I just, uh, the song, follow, follow, I will follow, who will, I. It's a commitment. It's a commitment to walk with God. Uh-huh, yeah. You belong to him, and uh, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I have decided to what? Follow Jesus. No turning back. The world behind. Now we can sing a song. But living the life is another step. Is another step. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. For it became, talking about Jesus. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make, talking about Jesus, the captain of their salvation. Perfect yourself. The captain. You ever been in a ship? Some of you got boats. And uh, you see, Brother Rice, you ever been in a boat? Boy, I have been in boats, huh? Huh? Between the North Island, New Zealand, South Island, New Zealand, the, boy, the oceans come in there and the waters come, whoa, turbulent. So I drive my vehicle onto the, onto the ferry, got all the ships and trucks and tractors and all the stuff on there. And man, I tell you, you don't want to eat too much before you get on that boat because <laughs> it's really rough seas. Yeah to go to South Island on that thing. You say, well, Brother Ross, how about a cruise ship? You ever been on a cruise ship? Oh, yeah. How many cruise ships have you been on, Brother? Well, I think it's hard to remember, but I think five, Greg. I think, I think five cruise ships. You say, well, where did you go on the cruise? I went on the ship. Yeah, but where did the ship go? I don't know. I, you say, well, what? Oh, you see, I was in this uh, Cayman Islands, the West Indies. I'll be there again in the spring. But, and so, uh, the, 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 you see, a man in the church, he's a leader in the church, he is a harbor, harbor master. And all these big ships come in. Only three can be at the docks. The others have to anchor out and they have little boats that go back and forth and bring the people several hundred at a time. They call them tenders because there there be about 2,000 workers on the ship and about 3,000 passengers on the ships. They're big. And since he's a big shot, you ought to see all the decorations on him. He's a big shot. And since he is in power, he has the right to take friends <laughs> with him. So you say, Brother Rice, you go out on the boat with your friends? Yeah, they all, they all boy, they, they respect him, and I come right alongside. You say, you on the boat? Yeah, and we look around. Woo, that's a whole city, a flow city. Look at that. Well, of course, as soon as we take a quick look, then we go where we're headed. Where's that? It's called food. Now, you cannot go on a cruise, a good cruise. You cannot go on one of those and, and come back the same weight on the scale that you were when you went. Because the one thing for sure on a good cruise ship is going to be food, 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 and more food. Woo! So we sit down and eat. You see, then what happens? Well, then we get off the ship. We did what we came for. We can look around and say, oh my, look at that. And then eat. 
You say, Brother Rice, you've been on five cruise ships? Yeah, yeah. But you didn't go anywhere? No. But I want to tell you, on a ship, the captain, the captain is in charge. The cap. You say, well, on earth, I'm in charge. But not on the ship you aren't. The captain. You say, Brother Rice, uh, you're a Christian? Yep. Well, you're not your own then. Uh, whose am I? God's. He bought you with Jesus' death on the cross and, and his resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Paid the price. Mm-hmm. You're not your own. What you doing with your hands on the wheel? My goodness, you never know what you'll find, Greg, in this pulpit. And uh, maybe one of those, like Brother Titus has been here before you, me and you, I don't know. But he's been here a while. I miss Elmer tremendously. He was such a friend to me, such a blessing to me. And, you know, but... But I, t- I tell you what, it's just uh, that, I, 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 whoa, what are you doing with your hands on that wheel of your life, Ralph? Uh, uh, well, I, I, uh, I was just thinking, I was just doing, I just had this problem, I just had that. What? But there is somebody supposed to be in charge of you. Somebody's supposed to be, what are your hands doing on? Captain. Now, I want to ask you a question. First of all, each one of you, do you know Christ is your Savior? If you were to die right now, you trust in church, then you're not, you're not going to make it. You trust in church. You say, I want to be, I've been baptized. That's one. The only thing going to get you to heaven is, is, is salvation, trust in Jesus Christ as your personal faith, Savior. Not of works, it's a gift by faith. Yeah. And, and as a Christian, you belong to God. Do you remember that? Or are you like me and forget sometimes? Sometimes I just uh, uh, get a hold of my, my life and I forget that, oh God, guide me, help me. Do you? Am I the only? Hey, when I was here last time, did I, did, were you here when I gave you a magnet and a thing that said no parking? Did y'all get one of those? I got something for you today too. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, but, 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 but it's hard to remember sometimes. You say, Brother Rice, you were just over in Michigan. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a wild mission field next door over here, just down, down the road up there. It's a long drive, actually. Uh, 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 yeah, that took me 13 hours, and then I stopped for a couple hours sleep, and it took me about 14, 15 hours. Yeah, it sure did, from, from where I was to get here. Uh-huh. Well, you say, Brother Rice, what was your problem? Well, you see, out there in the trailer, I was where there were a lot of cattle and a lot of animals and stuff, and there were flies. Hadn't had enough ice and snow yet, wasn't cold enough, and there were flies that came in my trailer. And the flies would land on my food, they'd land on my nose, land on my ear. Man, I have a nightmare that at night, one going to lay eggs right in my ear. Oh, and they, I hate, I don't like flies on my stuff. Okay? So I got my fly swatter. I got my fly swatter. I took hold of that thing, and I went, and one be at the door on the screen. Bam! You know what? I hit the screen, but I missed the fly. Did you know that a fly has an early warning system? Somehow they know when you're nearby. Did you know that? And you say, Brother Rice, you worked. Did I ever? I, I, I... For hours, I was working up a sweat. I was working up a sweat. How many did you get? I got him. I got him. I got him, Brother Miller. I, I had nine. I counted nine. Ha, ha, ha. But there's still more. There's still more. I don't know where they're coming in. Well, you get old RV, even a new RV, they can have holes, and the flies know where to find. I don't know how they was. And I was just going crazy. And all of a sudden, I woke up. I mean, I wasn't sleeping. It was just I was... I was on the steering wheel of my life. Y'all ever like that? Where you're on the steering wheel, you're trying to fix things? Uh Uh-huh. Forget who you belong to and who's supposed to be in charge and who you talk to when you're in a crossroads, a decision about anything. You talk to God about it. Oh, I know you do, but I didn't. And so all of a sudden say, Ralph, do you pray about it? Uh, well, God's busy saving souls. What's he care about a fly? Well, if it's a problem to me, one of his children... God cares about that. 
You see, well, Brother Rice, what happened when you thought that? Well, why, then I remembered. Then I remembered. You know, Ralph, didn't you have this problem last year? Didn't you have this problem in Indiana? Yeah. And didn't you go to your friend? Yeah, I did. I have a friend that sends me stuff. His name is Amazon. And so, I, didn't you order a zapper about this long and that big with two bulbs in it and zip, zip, zip? Didn't you order one of those, Ralph? Uh, I think I did. Well, where is it? Man, I, it's been a year. Man, I think I put it in the closet on my wife's side. She in heaven. So I put her side under blankets and way back in the corner under stuff. And what, well, don't you still have that? Well, might. So I went up there. I got the zapper out, plugged it in, zip, 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 zip. You see, what'd you do? At night, I went to bed. Well, what about the flies? I'm not worried about the flies. Because I got my hands off the wheel. I got my hands, and, and, there's, and there's a zapper. You say, you got up in the morning. What did you see? I saw a tray at the bottom of the zapper. It wasn't full. But I counted 31 flies, give or take one or two. You say, ha, that's imagination. You just threw numbers out. Well, I'll tell you this. I took pictures with my phone, and I sent it to my daughters, Joy, Jill, and Jana, so they could see that the old daddy not exaggerating. That's how many there are. You see, Ralph, you got nine. Yeah, and I had more to go. I, I wasn't doing so good. I wasn't doing so good. Oh, but God! You see, Brother Rice, since you've been here, I didn't see snow on the ground yet. Praise the Lord. But I did have my water freeze this morning, and all of a sudden, I went to flush the toilet. didn't flush. I said, well, I didn't know it was that cold. It froze last night. The water froze. May be thawed by now. Probably be thawed by now. But that zapper I still had plugged in. Ha! I got four flies in the zapper last night. Mm -hmm. You say you didn't do a thing. Nope. Just depends on who's in charge. Y'all look so spiritual, like I'm the only one that <laughs> works and tries to figure things out and zap, 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 and stress, 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 and frustrated frustration, and you just automatically just say, now, Lord, you take control. I forget. I forget. Bible says he is the captain. The captain is in charge. Ultimate control of the destination, of everything that happens on the trip. Now, a shepherd, are we sheep? Now, here's what the Bible says in John 10, 27. My sheep, Jesus said, hear my voice. I, I'm, I'm real good at listening to other people say, Brother Rice, you got this problem, you got that problem. Here's what I think you ought to do. Well, now, Brother Rice, you need to do this before you leave this area. Well, you need to remember. Huh? Huh? But oh, that we hear from God that every woman, every man, every husband, every wife, every grandparent, every child, every teenager that's here this morning, that you say, oh, God, help me to hear your voice. Promises we have in God's word. Psalm, listen to this, 32 and verse 8. I will instruct Ralph. <laughs> What's well, written to Christians? You get in on that? I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with, yeah, but I'm old, Lord. I'm old now. Uh -huh. How old are you? Well, I'm 83. I won't be 84 till January. Uh-huh. It doesn't matter how old you are. God never fails. Your health can fail. Your friends can fail. Circumstances fail. Money disappears. But God is faithful. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Psalm 73, thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterwards receive me. Whoa! got the Lord's presence and the Holy Spirit's guidance on earth and heaven ahead. What a life. What a privilege. Now, who steers your life depends on where you're going to end up. Proverbs 16, there's people on their way to heaven, but they sure have a miserable life. They're not walking with God. 
Proverbs 16, 25, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. I was here one time. I was, I was following Google. Do all know about Google? And I said, take me to. And I was coming here, I thought. Do you know Google took me to some gravel roads? Pulling a trailer. Bounce, bounce, bang, bang. I'm telling you, it was no fun at all. Were you going 50? Ha! I was going about five miles an hour. I mean, this was bad. You say, you love Google? Not now, I don't. Just to, I got Garmin out there and a trucker's Garmin, and I tell him how long I am and how tall I am, and, and it helps me. In fact, here, for the first time, I didn't have any tolls. I said, avoid tolls. Well, they make you go a few further miles, but I don't have the tolls because it's up to $100 tolls I had to pay you so you don't come here. But I have Google. But I want to tell you God's guidance. But there are other ways to go. The way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof, the ways of death. Proverbs 11.3, the integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors. Did you know most of the people that you'll ever meet in your life are not going to heaven? Most of the people that you meet, most of the people in business or community or in earth are not redeemed, born again. And uh, they're probably not going to pat you on the back when you love God. In fact, they want to see if, if they can drag you right in so they can say, ha ha, that wasn't real. You know, they, they're not real. They just fake it. But nobody can really live like that. You know, just, and they want to get you down to where they are. So ha, then they don't feel condemned and guilty. You need to remember who we are, who we belong to, who we follow. Psalm 107, verse 11, because they rebelled against the words of God. You see, Brother Rice, you have had boys and girls, teenagers, young people, young adults right here in this church, yeah. Yeah, I was here when the Twin Towers came down, parked right outside the second auditorium. See, I called auditorium be the, the one up high, the old, the old original, not here. But then what, what was, I parked right next to where I am now, and that's when the towers, well, we had some prayer time at this church then. Yeah, we sure did. I remember that so well. Mm. There are those that listen and those that don't. In Psalm 106, they soon forgot his works. They waited not for his counsel. I got my fly swatter. Boom, boom. I got one. I got eight now. Hi, I got nine. I was worn out. Sweat, frustration. There's still more. There are no end to them. Plagues of Egypt. That's where these came from. And then I sleep like a baby. No stress. You say, did you kill that fly? Nope. Nope. God woke me up and zap, I got it. <laughs> Sometimes you can have great stress in your life because you forget. W w would you want to put a child at the steering wheel to determine where you headed to take over the drive? I heard this fellow in Texas, he said, uh, he said I, I let my, my four-year-old boy drive, drive my, my, my Lincoln. And, uh, of course, the uh, other version has a Cadillac, but that was Lincoln. But they said, yeah, let him uh, drive it. said, you don't let him drive that. And the Texan said, well, I only let him drive it in the house. So, you know, everything bigger in Texas, especially stories and all. But I want to tell you that you cannot exaggerate the power of God. Oh, we can, we can minimize, we can f fictionize, we can imagine, we can ex exaggerate, but not with the power of God. I was a child at 10, then 13, then 16, and I had evangelists and missionaries would come by like I am here, and God sent them to help me. And uh, some of the others were busy messing with the pictures or with something else. And, and I, was, I was listening. And I, I said, well, that's what the Bible says. You say, you took it by faith. Yeah, I was just a kid. 
I, I mean, I hadn't lived long. I mean, I hadn't, I hadn't had a lot of experience. I just, that's what they said. That's what the Bible said. But now at 83, having traveled and ministered in 50 states, 20 countries, having made a little trip through the windshield with all those that hit us and the other car did, or being in the ambush in the Philippines where several died, or, well, my hospital trips this year. Uh, well, that, in turning, see, the fifth wheel's always turned. I had no problem, but this is a short bed truck in the back, and it's a bumper tow, and I had to make a jackknife turn, and I didn't realize that the trailer was hitting the truck, and so out in the truck, about this big, inside is this paint hanging off, and you say, uh, you had a problem. I tell teenagers, this is not heaven. This is earth. Stuff happens on earth. But if you're right with God, and with people. You can handle the stuff. Do you know the Lord is your Savior today? You say, I belong to Him, and He's the captain, my captain. We sing songs, I surrender, I will follow, and all these different, uh, different songs and things, and talk about surrender. And at, at, at camp meetings, or, or, or at, at tent meetings, or at, at a revival, or at a special conference, there'll be times of a, a dedication, surrender, commitment, where we say, God, I'm yours. Everything I am, everything I have, everything I'll ever be, it's all yours. May I give you the glory and the leadership, oh God. Be Lord of my life, and you guide me. I did that when I was very young. You say, Brother Rice, you did that? Well, let me tell you, that's not just a one-time deal. You say, well, what about this morning when you got up? Well, I came over here to see if anybody was here, and I was the only somebody. Yeah, I didn't see anybody else around, just me. Well, I wasn't alone because the Lord was with me. Oh, it's wonderful to, to be His. Commitment. You know, every one of us, you say, Brother Rice, dedication. I believe it's a daily deal. I believe it's a daily deal. Lord, today, I don't know what's ahead, but I sure need your help, and, and I commit it. Lord, I'm yours, and this is up to you. <laughs> and, and I don't make too good a, 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 a would you take the, the wheel? Oh, God, ha! help me to keep my hands off and only go in the way that you lead. Romans chapter 12, some of you know it. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye, Ralph, present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of... Have you, have you trusted Christ as your Savior? You say, Brother Rice, I am. I've been adopted into God's family. Mm -hmm. Then I ask you the question, has there been a time in your life or are you still committing the lordship, the ownership, the direction... I was in a meeting years ago. Was it a long time ago? Yeah, it was. It was uh, about 43 years ago. Uh huh. I was, in a, I was in a meeting, and the evangelist passed out papers, and, uh, and, and he said, uh, here's a reminder. When you come to Crossroads all the time, this will be in your Bible or in your pocket or your purse. Be a reminder and help you. So I said, okay, I'll do that. And I signed it. Got it witnessed by the person sitting next to me. Put the date on it, uh-huh. That was in March the, the 8th, and that was in 1980. Yeah, and Tom Clone was the witness right there on the witness line. You see, well, Brother Rice, uh, 
you have that as a, a reminder. It's what you do each day, but that you have committed your life. Oh, yeah, yeah, got my driver's license. They won't let me on a plane or anything without showing them, you know, that driver's license. And then down here, well, that would be a Medicare card, about worn out, yeah. And, and then here, uh, here is it says all, and there's one. You say, well, you took what was on the paper and you put it on plastic. That's what it did. And so just a few weeks ago, I had given out paper once many years ago, and, and two different people in two different states in the last six months, eight months, have called me or talked to me and said, Brother Rice, thank you. Thank you for giving that little sheet of paper. Oh, I had dedicated my life to the Lord, but this has been a wonderful help. I come through some tough times, and it's just a good reminder. Thank you. So I thought, okay. You know, Lord, I should get this on plastic. So I ordered from Canada, from Vistaprint. Just like you got the no parking, I ordered these that say all. And so, but he passed them out to everybody. I said, I'm not going to do that. Because, you know, I don't believe in guilt. The devil wants to say bad, bad, shame, shame. But Jesus, he lifts and forgives. And you say, Brother Rice, what you know? I know how to get right with God. I know how to be flying with the flash water, but then I need to say, oh, God, forgive me for not. I didn't even pray about this one bit. I sweat up a storm. I was so upset. Lost so much energy, and I never even talked to you about it. I know how to get right with the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I believe what you talk to God about is pretty important. And I was concerned that maybe some wife do this to her husband, and so he fill it out, because, George, you ought to do that. So I, I not pass these out to you today, but out on the tables... Out on the tables, there's some pens that are permanent ink, so don't go getting them on your fingers, you know. And they're ultra fine point, ultra fine point little pens. And, and so, as this has been a help to many and to me, here's what it says, all. All that I have, all that I ever hope to be, I now and forever dedicate to the Lord Jesus Christ for his use and glory. Absolutely, I do this unconditionally now and forever. Romans 12, 1 and 2, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Signature line there and then uh, witness. And what's the date today? Is this October 3-0? Y'all agree on that? So right there, 10, 30, 22, still 22, 22, right there, and witness. So they're on the table. Been a blessing to me that I, 40 years ago, filled one out. I, I dedicated the Lord, and it's something that I, I try to do each day, but it's a good reminder. And so if you know the Lord, you know you're saved. And, and he is the Lord of your life. He recognizes his ownership and lordship. And uh, you would like, there, there are three tables out in the vestibule, and, and so there are pens right there, and if somebody else is signing theirs, you can get them to witness it. Let's stand together for prayer. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Exodus 32, consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, that he may bestow upon you a blessing. Lord, thank you for this church. Thank you for the men and women, the young people, the homes, the families, the children. Oh God, that each one would know you. If you were to come, if they were to pass and die this day, heaven would be their home. We pray, dear Lord, that I may not so easily forget who's at the steering wheel of my life. Oh God, help us to walk in obedience, listening to your voice, and following as good sheep, following our shepherd. Now, Lord, the little magnets that I gave out two years ago and 
no parking about walking with God, just plastic. But I thank you for the people who have said, Brother Rice, I, I look at mine and I do thank the Lord and I do pray and it does remind me. So Lord, I pray that the cards that are out there on the table just be a reminder of what some of these dear, dear friends and Christians have already done in their life. It's nothing new, but it's just a, another commitment. It's a reminder. I pray that these little cards would be a blessing. Lord, I pray for the other missionaries that this church supports. Oh, God, you know their needs. You know where they are. I pray that you'll touch the hearts of some here today that maybe haven't been doing much for missions to, to be able somehow to do more. And that this church might be able to extend their outreach to support another missionary. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your love, your forgiveness, your power. In Jesus' name, amen.